Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We're going to be covering an explanation of man hours. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Steve Griffin for allowing us to use some excerpts from his book, Keys to Successful Estimating. Steve has written many articles and books on estimating and was one of the featured designers brought aboard to help create the best bid estimating software and also the best bid hybrid, the most advanced software to date from first choice electrical estimating software. So now let's get started. Understanding man hours. Every proper electrical estimate must include the time that it will take to install all of the material. This is based on calculating the installation time of each item right down to the man hour. Therefore, it's important to understand the use of man hours. So what is a man hour? The definition of a man hour is a man hour, labor unit, or person hour is the amount of work performed by an average worker in one hour. It is used in written estimates for estimation of the total amount of uninterrupted labor required to perform a task. A labor unit is a benchmark used by a company or estimator to determine the labor value of an installation. Now notice the word benchmark. Man hours out of a book are just a great starting point. A good estimator will include their own knowledge and working experience along with the level of difficulty that a certain phase of work will take. It would be impossible to relate all of the influences that affect labor units, but you as the estimator must consider job difficulty, installation difficulty, and at what percent of the given man hours is your company's ability to perform that work. Most companies that I have estimated for can install work at about 80% of the book's man hours. This is for standard one and two story work with nine foot ceilings. Take into consideration such things as ceiling heights and the floors of a building. All of these factors increase the man hours. My suggested man hours would increase to 85% for installations over 10 feet and to 110% for installations of 16 to 20 feet. The same factors should be considered for multiple story buildings. So on this slide, what I've done is provided you with some examples of multi-storing building labor additions. You can see one to two floors is a standard estimate. Don't need to add a certain percentage. This is what we just covered. All the way up to 10 to 15 floors where you could add, as a suggestion, 15%. Block work. This does not include exposed work, block work, or poured in place concrete. You may never get a block job by using this tip, but it is my experience that it will take at least double the man hours to install work in block. I suggest 200% of book. Exposed work will take an additional 20%, so my suggestion for exposed work would be 100%. Man hours are one of the most misunderstood areas of the estimate, but they are simple once you understand it. You can arrive at man hours by using the following formula. The minutes to perform a task divided by one hour or 60 minutes is equal to man hours. And I've provided you with a couple samples below here. 15 minutes over 60 minutes in an hour is equal to a quarter man hour. One quarter man hours times 60 results in 15 minutes. So you can see it works out there. One man per hour is equal to one electrician working for one hour or two electricians working for 30 minutes. So the amount of time it takes to install electrical materials is measured in man hours. This makes calculating time when estimating more precise. It is manageable to estimate a project that will last a couple of weeks just by saying that it will take one day to do this function and two days to do that function, but when estimating projects longer in duration, it becomes essential to revert back to man hours. Each piece of material, no matter how big or how small, will have an associated man hour. This is the time allotted to install the item. 
Labor Unit Breakdown. I've included the chart below as a handy reference so you can do a quick comparison between, for example, 0.4 of a man hour is equal to 24 minutes, or for example, three quarters of a man hour is equivalent to 45 minutes. NECA man hours. Every estimator should select a standard of man hours, whether published or created from your experience. NECA man hours have been the benchmark of the electrical construction industry for as long as I can remember. Most estimates are derived from using standardized man hours. Practical man hours. As stated before, each item will have an associated man hour. The process will begin by creating your material list and then placing a man hour for each item and then extending the math and doing your totals. Next, you would price each item and then extend that math in total. And here I've provided you with an example. You can see in the far left column there's a quantity, and then a description of the material in the second column, and then the associated man hours, and then the extended man hours. So that would be 10 times 0.5 man hours. I've made that calculation for every single item on this list, and then reflected the total man hours at the bottom, which here totals 133.86 man hours. Now to have a complete estimate, you will also need to place a price by each item as shown in this example below here. You can see our original man hours estimate there has been extended with a cost and then an extended cost. Again, at the bottom, we have a total number of man hours at 133.86, and then that's extended to a cost of $2,259.10. A long and tiring process. As you can see, this is a long and tiring process. I can't tell you how many 20 page estimates that I've penciled in, just like the previous examples hour after exhausting hour of looking up man hours and pricing each line item. It's a ton of work and time. With an electrical estimating software like the best bid by First Choice Electrical Estimating Software, this can be created in detail in seconds, not hours. Simply by entering the quantity, you can produce a detailed list of material with pricing and man hours extended for you. Now, allocating cost to your man hours. You may elect to charge 100% of your man hours to $1 amount, for example. This sample project has 1,000 man hours. We elect to charge $40 per man hour, so this would look like the following. 1,000 man hours times $40 would be $40,000 in labor. We will address overhead and labor burdens in another webinar. We may also elect to break out the man hours into different labor classifications. This could look like the following. An apprentice at 25%, so 250 man hours times $15 is equal to 3,750. A journeyman at 25% would be 250 man hours times $30 would equal $7,500, or a superintendent at 25% would look like 250 man hours times $45. That would come out to $11,250. And now let's look at a project manager at 25%. That would be 250 man hours times $55 would be $13,750. And that totals $36,250. One of the biggest misconceptions that we see when an estimator moves to an estimating software is understanding labor percentage allotment. The common issue that we see that a new estimator has is they think that since they will have four people on the job for the entire length of the project, that they should allot 100% to each of those employees. It's like this example. If you have a man hour pie, and you send four people to eat that pie, one person will eat a percentage of the pie and another person will eat another percentage of the same pie, but they can't eat 100% of the pie each. 
Just remember, a thousand man hours means it will take one man a thousand hours, or two men 500 hours, or four men 250 hours each. And a cliff note for you, two men will not do twice as much work as one man, nor will four men do four times the work of one man. Now let's cover wasted time. Some estimators add an additional factor called wasted time. This is just as it sounds. A worker will work eight hours in an eight hour day. You have breaks and heaven forbid if they smoke or have a personal cell phone. More and more companies are only hiring non-smokers. The percentages that I mostly see used are 2% or so to account for wasted time. I personally don't use this type of batter. I feel like a person that works on a moderate gate and is fair with his time will bring the work in on time using 80%. I believe weather plays as much of a factor as anything. It could be too hot or too cold. I use best bid electrical estimating software and find it to be the best on the market. The labor calculations are right on and it's extremely quick. Check it out at www.bestbidestimating.com. And let us know if you enjoyed this webinar at info at onecees.com. That stands for first choice electrical estimating software.com. Thank you.